I put Austin Matthews back in 2007 so he can go head to head with the greatest goal scorer of all time, which is Alexander Ovechkin. He's also going to be playing alongside Matt Sundin on the Toronto Maple Leafs, and he's going to be playing in the dead puck era where goal scoring really wasn't that high. That is what makes Ovi's goal scoring ability so impressive that he started out in 2004 and literally scored like 50, 60 goals almost every single season. But can Austin do that if we put him in that era? Or is he literally just a product of the 2020s? Where scoring is increasing year by year. We're going to find that out. Because I do have the 2007-2008 NHL roster. Now this Toronto Maple Leafs team is much different than it is in real life. Obviously we're back in 07. We have guys like Matt Sundin who's an 89 overall. Antropov's an 86. Overall it's not really the greatest roster. At least offensively. Defensively. We do have Tomas Caberlet at an 88 overall. He's going to be our highest rated defender. And in goal, we are rocking with Vesa Toskala, who's an 86. So no Nylander, Morgan Riley, or even Mitch Marner is going to be here. Of course, no Ilya Samsonov, but we are rocking with a 94 Austin Matthews, who's actually tied with the highest overall in the entire league right now. I mean, Crosby's a 94 Whoever made this roster didn't make the overalls that high. So let's go ahead and see how good Austin Matthews is in the 2007-2008 season and beyond. In the dead puck era, see if he can bring a Stanley Cup to the Toronto Maple Leafs, what he could not do in real life so far. Before we go ahead and do that, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. So at the end of the very first season, luckily Toronto is going to end up making the playoffs. We went 48, 31, and 3. Good enough for 99 points. Fourth in the Atlantic Division behind Boston, Montreal, and Detroit. Now if we take a look at the entire NHL, the Red Wings were the best team with 57 wins. That's not too shocking considering how stacked their team is right now. They have guys like Pavel Datsuk, Henrik Zetterberg is there. Nick Lidstrom is still on the team. Montreal finished second. Boston was up there. Pittsburgh was very good. And Toronto, who was actually top five in the entire NHL. Our division is literally a bloodbath. Now, if we take a look at Austin Matthews, he's going to put up numbers goal scoring wise. 57 goals on the season, 32 assists for 89 points in 82 games. So he was point per game. And I mean, a damn near 60 goal season in the prime of his career at 26 years old. Matt Sundin only at 13 goals, but 79 points. Blake had 71. Antropov, 68. Steen had 57. Thomas Caberlet didn't have that great of a season, honestly, for an 88 overall elite defender. And if we take a look at Toscala in goal, he's going to go 40, 23, and 2. Four shutouts and not really the greatest stats, but four shutouts is decent for a regular season at least. Pavel Datsuk's going to end up leading the entire NHL in scoring with 104 points, followed by Backstrom's 95, Semin had 93, Joe Thornton was up there at 91, Henrik Zetterberg had 91, Jerome McGinley had 90, Matthews obviously was up there at 89 alongside Ovi who had 87. Now on the goal side, Austin Matthews is going to end up leading with 57 on the season, so he's going to bag that Maurice Richard trophy. Followed by Ovi's 46, Aginla had 45, Dabrinkit was up there. Why is Alex Dabrinkit in this roster? <laughs> he was not here when I did the 2007-2008 full simulation. I don't know why he's showing up now on the Red Wings. Well, no wonder they're so good. He's an 87 himself. Zach Parise had 42. Mike Richards, 37. Gabrick was up there. Pukanich had 37. Shout out to Ryan Kessler, 36 goals and 69 points. Still on the Vancouver Canucks. For goalies, Chris Osgood is going to lead in wins. And for shutouts, it's going to go to Marc-Andre Fleury, who had nine on the season. I don't believe Toscala was up there. Way down there. Toscala was down there at four, tying Carey Price, who was a very young Carey Price, even though it says he's 36 years old. Now, in the first round of the playoffs, we are up against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins, which is a very tough matchup. I don't even know if we're going to get out of the first round, honestly. And if we don't, that's just typical Toronto fashion. So, predictably, we did end up losing in the very first round in five games to the Pittsburgh Penguins. They made the Stanley Cup Finals, but lost in Game 7 to the Colorado Avalanches. They are going to take on the Stanley Cup here in Season Number 1. Now, for the playoffs, Matthews was okay, I guess, in five games. He had two goals, one assist for three points, so not even a point per game. Only 19 shots on goal. Was a plus three. I mean, this team is definitely going to need some improvement over the offseason if we want to be an actual Stanley Cup contender. Pavel Datsuk is going to take on the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy, while the Maurice Richard will go to Austin Matthews. The Norris is going to go to Dion Phaneuf. Brunette is going to win the Conn Smythe. The Vesna will go to Mark andre Fleury. And the Selkie will go to Anze Kobitar of the LA Kings. Now, I am very interested to see what kind of moves the computer makes over the offseasons here and see if we can add some good 
good players to the Toronto Maple Leafs. As we know, in this era of Leaf fans, you guys suffered a lot. Toronto was not very good pretty much until Matthews arrived there in 2016. I mean, in 2013, you had Boston on the ropes, but could not get it done and blew one of the most embarrassing Game 7 chokes. So Austin Matthews has jumped all the way up to a 96 overall. Matt Sundin's up to a 90. Andrew Poff still an 86. We do have Jason Blake as our second line center. We have Alexander Steen. Overall, the team is slightly improved over last season. Our best defender is going to be Kubina, who was an 89 overall. I don't know why we have John Klingberg on the team, but I guess that is what it is. Samsonov is in the net for some reason over Toskala. I don't know if he was in the AHL for year number one or not. Also, I guess just for this video, I'm going to have to strip Matt Sundin of the captaincy and give it to Austin Matthews just in case we do end up winning a Stanley Cup here in the video. I do want to see Matthews go up there and collect it and be the first person to do so for Toronto in over 50 seasons. Well, technically not 50 now since we're back in 2009 or 2008 right now. It's been a very, very long time since Toronto actually won a Stanley Cup. 1967, in fact was the last time they won it. I'm sure none of you guys ever heard that. Toronto is going to have a great improvement off of last season as we now finish first in the Atlantic going 58, 17, and 7, 123 points. That honestly might be the best record Toronto has ever had in a single regular season before in their franchise's history. Obviously the best in their division and the best in the entire NHL, followed by the Pittsburgh Penguins. San Jose was up there, Chicago and Calgary. Obviously, Chicago has a very young Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves. Austin Matthews is going to go ahead and have a great regular season. 66 goals, 37 assists for 103 points in 82 games. Matt Sundin had 102, 19 goals and 83 points. Blake had 81, Antropov had 80, Steen 76. And if we take a look at our goalie here, Toskala is going to go 33, 12 and 4. Three shutouts, a 9-10 save percentage, which is not honestly that bad. But I mean, in this era, goalies should be dominating slightly more than they are in real life. Matthews is going to end up leading the entire NHL in goals with 66 and points with 103. So he is dominating, even doing better than he does in real life. I mean, he might not get 66 in real life. He's slowed down a lot over the past month. Like I said, when he's hot, he's hot. When he's not, he's not. He scores in bunches. He's not a consistent scorer. He literally will score 13 goals in four games, and then the next seven games not score a single goal. Matt Sundin had 102. Pavel Datsuk was up there with 101. Backstrom had 100. Oli Jokinen had a 99 points as a centerman. Henrik Zetterberg had 94. McDonald 94. Keith Kachuk was up there. Now if we take a look at goals, other than Matthews, Boys is going to have the most with 51. Followed by Aginla's 46. Parise had 43. Ovi only 41. He's not really been scoring that much. He's a 95 overall. So I do expect slightly more. I mean, he is 39 years old, so that could hinder his performance. And in the first round of the playoffs, just like in the 2020s, Toronto is going to have to go through Tampa Bay in round number one. I mean, all these series basically go to six or seven games, so it should be very fun and exciting. And unfortunately, Ottawa would end up dominating us in round number two in five games as the Calgary Flames will go on and beat the Pittsburgh Penguins. So Pittsburgh lost in back-to-back -back finals in Game 7. First to Colorado and now the Calgary Flames. Man, that's got to be tough. In the playoffs, Matthews was actually pretty good. Seven goals, seven assists for 14 points in only 12 games. So he was over point per game. Blake had 14. Matt Sundin had 14, as well as Antropov, who had 12. So offensively, we were pretty decent. Maybe we just need a goaltender to actually make a deep playoff run. Datsuk is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, while the Art Ross and Maurice Richard will go to Austin Matthews. The Norris is going to go to Jovanevsky, while the Khan Smythe will go to Lango and the Vesna to Evgeny Nabokov. And finally, the Selkie Trophy will go to Thomas Placanix. Austin Matthews is still sitting at a 96 overall. We actually picked up Marion Gabrick in the offseason. He's an 87. Matt Sundin is up to a 91. So our top six is definitely filling out. We also have Sergei Fedorov as our third line center at an 86 overall. Uh, defensively, it doesn't look like we picked up anybody. If anything, we've lost our best defenders over the past two seasons now. And if we take a look at our goalie, we have Ilya Brizgalov as our starter, 90 overall, which is a big, big improvement. After improving the roster, Toronto's not going to have the greatest of regular seasons. I mean, we were fifth in the Atlantic, barely making the playoffs, going 45, 30, and 7, only 97 points on the season 
I mean, last year we have 58 wins, nailed down to 45. Ottawa was the best team in our division, nailed for the entire NHL. The Pittsburgh Penguins would end up finishing first as they won 53 games, followed by the Ottawa Senators. Calgary was up there. St. Louis was good. Detroit and Anaheim. Austin Matthews is still going to have a great regular season. 52 goals, 44 assists for 96 points, followed by Blake, who had 84. Dundee had 83. Andropov, 83. Gabrick only had 81. Also 27 goals, which is not bad. Steen had 68. Fedorov, only 10 goals and 41 points. He was also a minus 12 down on that third line. Maybe we should throw him up on the second line, something like that. I don't even know. If we take a look at Briz Galoff, he went 34, 23, and 6. Only two shutouts and not really the greatest stats. Three goals against per game. Danny Heatley is going to end up leading the entire league and scoring with 104 points. Followed by Datsuk's 102. Kachuk had 101. Matthews, 96. I'm going to ignore Quinton Byfield there. Boys had 95. McDonald, 95. Dustin Brown had 94. Now on the goal side, Aginla is going to tie with Matthews for the most in the NHL. 52. Bobby Dustin Brands 49. Boys had 46. Heatley only 44. Heath Kachuk was up there. Mike Fisher had 42. I believe he is married to Carrie Underwood, who's an absolute rocket. Rizgalov's not going to be up there for wins as Chris Osgood is going to lead with 46. And for shutouts, I don't believe he was there either. Henrik Lundqvist is going to have the most at six. And yet again, in the very first round, we are up against Sidney Crosby and the Pittsburgh Penguins, which will be a tough matchup. Again, we are going to end up losing in the very first round this time in game six seven to Pittsburgh as the Boston Bruins will go on and sweep the Dallas Stars in the Stanley Cup Finals. For the playoffs, Matthews was pretty good, I guess. He was almost goal per game. He had five goals, six assists for 11 points in only seven games. Antropov was actually our leading scorer. He had 13 points. Alexander Steen had 10. Matt Sundin didn't have the greatest playoff runs. Atsuk again is going to take home the Ted Lindsay and the Hart Trophy, the Art Ross, the Danny Heatley, and the Maurice Richard again to Austin Matthews for the third time in the video as him and Aginla are going to share this award. The Norris is going to end up going to Zidlicki, the Conn Smythe to Patrice Bergeron, the Vesna to Henrik Lundqvist, and the Selkie Trophy will end up going to Pavel Datsuk. So far, it's been pretty up and down. I mean, regular season wise, we've been okay making the playoffs every Every single season but obviously in the playoffs that's a whole different story it's pretty much how toronto is in real life good in the regular season choke in the playoffs it's in repeat year after year damn this whole video i've basically been flaming toronto and i absolutely love it so austin matthews is still a 96 overall sundin has come back down to earth to a 90 the team overall isn't as good as last season, and we didn't have that great of a season, honestly. Lost in the first round, didn't have a great regular season as well. Uh, defensively, we are looking pretty rough, and in goal, we are still going with Briz Galoff, who is now down at an 88 overall. So this Matthews experiment has pretty much gone the way it has in real life in the 2020s, or since 2016, I should say. As we are good in the regular season, he puts up pretty good numbers. He's actually putting up better numbers than he does in real life in the game. But then once playoff time hits, we don't get any playoff success, only winning once getting here the first round one time so far and now three years so i'll simulate a few more seasons and then if toronto still chokes and matthews cannot get it done i guess we're gonna end up failing the challenge of winning Toronto A Stanley Cup back in 2007 as Austin Matthews is our best player. Now for season number four, Toronto is going to end up finishing fourth in the Atlantic as we go 43, 35, and four. Good enough for 90 points. Tampa Bay, Boston, and Ottawa were all better in our division. Now for the entire NHL, the New York Islanders are actually going to end up finishing as the best team in the entire league, followed by Ottawa, Boston, Calgary, Anaheim, and Minnesota. I'm just going to check out the bottom here. We have the Columbus Blue Jackets, the Winnipeg Jets, and the Dallas Stars. Austin Matthews is going to have 66 goals and 108 points in 82 games, which is a very, very good regular season. So far, numbers-wise, he's been very good scoring the rock. Scoring the rock? Scoring the puck? What am I even saying? He had 57 in year number one, 66 in year two, 52 last season, and now 66 again. So his goal-scoring ability definitely has translated. This is statistically his best season. Followed by Matt Sundin, who had 30 goals and 89 points. Andropov had 78. Blake had 77. And Marion Gabrick had 29 goals and 73 points. Rizgalov is going to go 34, 31, and 3. Two shutouts and really not great stats, honestly. I'm kind of disappointed. Again, Matthews is going to end up leading the entire league in goal scoring with 66 and points with 108. Followed by Alex Kovalev, who had 100. Malkin had 99. And Danny Alfredson was up there. Danny Heatley was up there. Boys had 94. Kachuk, 94. Saku Koivu also had 94. 
54 now on the goal side. Other than Matthews, Andrews is going to lead with 51 on the season, followed by Dustin Brown's 48, Evgeny Malkin at 46, Beach had 44, Rick Nash was up there at 43, Aginla had 41, so a lot of 40 goal scorers, not many 50, only one on the season, well technically two, but Matthews is also a 60 goal scorer. And now for the playoffs, we have the Battle of Ontario in round number one, so let's see who goes out on top. Honestly, I don't know if we will get a long playoff run in this video, but I'm very, I have my fingers crossed. I'm hoping for it. And unfortunately, we are going to lose in round number one in five games yet again, this time to the Ottawa Senators as the Boston Bruins go back to back, winning another Stanley Cup, beating the Minnesota Wild also in five games. Austin Matthews is not going to have a good first round whatsoever. Three goals, one assist for four points in five games, also a minus two. Didn't even lead our team in points, but I guess it is what it is at this point. Matthews is going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay, Maurice Richard, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Norris is going to go to Nick Lidstrom. The Con Smythe is going to go to Kobashu. Oh, the Vesna will somehow go to Linus Allmark, and the Selkie will end up going to Brad Richards of the Dallas Stars. Austin Matthews is still going to be a 96 overall. Fedorov's up to an 87. Andropov is also an 87. Sundin's nail on the second line at a 91, so he's back up there playing very good hockey. Defensively, we are pretty shallow honestly and in goal we still have Ilya Brzgalov who's back up to an 89 I mean when we got him he was literally a 90 overall so we slightly decreased from that well it is actually very fitting that this is our final season of the video as the Toronto Maple Leafs have literally missed the playoffs going 38 38 and 6 good enough for 82 points second last in the Atlantic only above the Florida Panthers who I mean Florida back then was absolutely terrible compared to now when they got Matthew Kachuk we take a look at the entire NHL Ottawa is going to be the best team winning 58 games followed by Pittsburgh Boston St. Louis Anaheim and San Jose despite actually missing the playoffs Matthews is still going to have a great season 63 goals and 96 points Andrew Prof at 78 Sundin 73 Blake at 69 Fedorov 66 yeah this roster did not perform well at all and Ilya Brzgalov was an absolute mess in the crease for the entire NHL, Jose Andrews is going to lead in goals with 65 and points with 103. This roster literally is falling apart. Lidstrom had 97. Matthews is up there. Kovalev had a pretty good year. And the St. Louis Blues are going to go on and win the Stanley Cup as the Pittsburgh Penguins yet again lose in the Stanley Cup Finals, this time in six games. That's three finals losses just in this video alone. Lidstrom is going to end up taking home the Ted Lindsay, the Hart Trophy, and the Norris while the Art Ross and Maurice Richard are going to go to Andrews. Keith Kachuk is going to end up winning the con smite the vesna to marty biron and the selkie will end up going to robbins and that is going to do it for this video boys if you enjoyed it make sure you leave some support on it as we have put austin matthews back in 2007 in the dead puck era and overall we had mixed results on one hand in the regular season he scored a lot of goals and put up pretty good numbers but in the playoffs suffered just like he does in real life basically zero playoff success only out of the first round once and we missed the playoffs in year number five so that's very disappointing but overall matt Matthews can score with the best of them. We already knew that though. He's the best goal scorer in the entire league at the moment. He's pretty much on pace with Alexander Ovechkin. It'll be interesting to see how he ages and if he's still as good of a goal scorer as Ovi was in his mid to late 30s. Also, staying healthy is going to be very hard for a guy like Matthews, who already missed a ton of games. Ovi barely missed any games during his prime of his career. Regardless, let me know in the comments what you would like to see next. I would like to say thank you all for watching, and until next time, don't be silly. Wrap your willy.